Greetings, this is Darvain and welcome to a new Let's Play for the channel. I will be doing a Playscape Torment. Now, I did try and do Planescape Torment before in the past and technical issues basically meant that I am having to restart from the beginning. Uh, I'm luckily all the uh, testing that I did from beforehand has me meant that it's much easier for me to uh, get the right settings for this one. If you remember last time, uh, we have some video playback issues for the movies, but other than that, I have reduced the resolution of the screen to be a little more than uh, just a little bit. Uh, the next one up from next one up from a six uh, forty by four eighty, because there isn't a. Uh, uh, option to change resolution in playing torment because a lot of things were changed in order to focus on a better uh, single player experience uh, for some reason the there is some stuttering with the video with the videos when trying to record using bandicam um, I've tried this much as uh, no matter and I just cannot get around them but considering the uh, movies make up such a small part of the game I decided that it's worth while it's something that we can live with um, sure as hell beats not having or not being able to do Planescape Torment which is regarded as one of the best games and uh, CRPG stories ever told uh, even now, Planescape Torment is still top tops charts for RPG stories uh, in video games, and is right up there with uh, modern classics like Skyrim and so forth. And um, people who have played this Planescape Torment have have made rave reviews of it at the time and even with the uh, the enhanced edition an all new audience is discovering the joy that is Planescape Torment so it's enough waffling I am going to start Planescape Torment
Okay, yep, as you see there, some choppiness with the videos. Uh, we haven't lost anything as uh, pretty much all the storyline is told throughout the dialogue in the game anyway. Um, so, now I have a walkthrough. Well, actually I have the original, the original strategy guide. Um, which I will be using only as a sort of reference in how to guide me on how I want to go through and explore Planescape Torment. I won't be using it as I play, it's just a reference to kind of give some sort of structure to one way in which it could be played. And we have, well, we have the Nameless One, that's us. This is the character generation screen. Modify your statistics by clicking on the plus and minus buttons for each statistic. Move the cursor over each statistic for a description of each purpose. Now, a thing to understand is that because this is very story heavy, we don't have a lot of options in how, we, how our character can be. Because we are going through a scripted narrative. So we play as the nameless one, that's the only choice that we've got. Okay. Let's have a look. Character points. The number of points you can add to you have left to add to your statistics. Armor class. This number represents your overall defense. The lower the number, the harder it is for your enemies to hit you. Hit points. Number represents your health. Whenever you take damage, your hit points will drop. When it reaches zero, you are dead. Okay. We have strength. This ability represents your raw strength. A high strength allows you to carry more weight and makes your melee attacks more accurate and damaging. Your strength is average. Intelligence. The ability score, this ability score represents your memory, reasoning and deductive skills. A high intelligence helps you regain memories faster, gives you more dialogue options and aids your mage skills. Your intelligence is average. Wisdom. This ability score represents your intuition, common sense and willpower. A high wisdom helps you recall memories and gives you a bonus to experience points. Your wisdom is average. Dexterity. This ability score represents your agility, reflexes and hand-eye coordination. A high dexterity makes you harder to hit and aid your thief skills. Your dexterity is average. Constitution. This ability score represents your physique, hardiness and state of health. A high constitution gives you more hit points and in a nameless one's case, a faster regeneration rate as well. Your constitution is average. This ability score represents your charisma. This ability score represents your persuasiveness, personal magnetism, and ability to lead. The higher your charisma, the more favorably others will react towards you. Your charisma is average. Now you may notice there that we have ability scores that increase our thief skills and our mage skills, as well as a generic fighter, because the nameless one is very unique in its in its character in it, their character progression, in that they can be a they're essentially a fighter mage thief, but they can only be one of those three classes at a time. So the best way to describe the nameless one is they are a fighter or a mage or a thief. Now. In order to get the most out of the game, we will be playing as a thief, uh, not thief, as a mage. We, but we don't start the game as a mage, we start the game as a fighter. And we can learn thief skills and mage skills as we go on. But basically, we want to uh, eventually become a mage. Um, What's unique about the game is that, as well as this unique character setup, the game rewards you for specialising, i.e. which levels you reach 
which classes you reach level 7 and level 12 in first. Because you can chop and change between the three classes as you wish. Especially when you've got certain characters in your party. Now, for us, we want to be, we not just when I say, are we going to play a mage? We want to specialise as a mage because that gives us the most, probably the best uh, ability scores in my opinion, the bonuses in my opinion for specialisation, as it gives us our intelligence and wisdom, which relate mostly to the dialogue. So, what we're going to do, we are going to have int wisdom charisma and dex. Now, for the initial part, most of our ability scores, most of the tests are really, are really relatively minor. Basically, if you've got 13 or higher, you will succeed. Um, you'll notice that we've gone with minimum, we can't actually lower these anymore, with minimum strength and constitution. They're, they're helpful if we want to fight, but to be honest, given that we regenerate and we can basically take as long as we want to play the game, um, we, being a fighter, Unless you've got some aggression to uh, mute out against some computer, computer AI, 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 AI creatures, it's not really what this game is about. Don't get me wrong; there are there is combat, and but you, and there is a lot of it. But it's not the that is not the focus of the game. The focus of the game is on the dialogue and on the storyline. So what we want to do, we want, we've got, what we do we want? We want to make sure our intelligence is as high as possible. And we want to keep our wisdom where our dexterity and charisma are relatively, are relatively above average. We can add, there are ways to increase them that are really good. Uh, but for the most part, we'll be wanting the intelligence and the wisdom bearing in mind that our initial initially we want to keep our wisdom low because we don't want a lot of bonus experience points that might seem counter counterintuitive but if we put but basically since the cutoff point is level seven for when we specialize we don't want to accidentally specialize in fighter because we haven't got round, we haven't got round to finding where we're gaining too much bonus experience points, and haven't got around to where the uh, we learn to be a mage yet. So yeah. So lots of talking. This is going to be one of those let's plays where I will be saying a lot of stuff, trying to read out stuff with my teeth in and basically if you don't like my voice this is probably not going to be a let's play for you hey chief you okay you playing corpse or you're putting the blinds on the dusties? <laughs> I thought you were a debtor for sure. Uh, who are you? Uh, who am I? How about you start? Who are you? I asked you first, Skull. Yeah, and I asked you second. What's your name? I don't know. I can't remember. You can't remember your name? Heh, <laughs> well, next time you spend a night in this burg, go easy on the bub. Name's Mort. I'm trapped in here too. Trapped? Yeah, 
since you haven't had time to get your legs yet, here's the, here's the chart. I've tried all the doors and this room is locked tighter than the chastity belts. We're locked in. Where? What is this place? It's called the Mortuary. A big black structure with all the architectural charm of a pregnant spider. The Mortuary? What? Am I dead? Not from where I'm standing. You've got scars aplenty though. Looks like some Burke painted you with a knife. All the more reason to give this place a laugh before whoever carved you up comes back to finish the job. Scars? How bad are they? Well, the carvings on your chest aren't too bad. But the ones on your back... What pauses? Say, it looks like you've got a whole tattoo gallery on your back, Chief. Spells out something. Tattoos on my back? What do they say? Heh. Looks like you come with directions. Mort clears his throat. Let's see, it starts with... I know you feel like you've been drinking a few kegs of stick squash, but you need to centre yourself. Among your possessions is a journal that has shed some light on the dark of the matter. Farod can fill you in on the rest of the chart if he's not in the dead book already. Farod, does it say anything else? Yeah, there's a bit more. Mort pauses. Let's see, it goes on. Don't lose the journal or we'll be up the sticks again. And whatever you do, do not tell anyone who you are or what happens to you, or they'll put you on a pit quick, quick pilgrimage to the crematorium. Do what I tell you. Read the journal, then find Farod. No wonder my back hurts. There's a damn novel written there. As for that journal I'm supposed to have with me, was there one with me when I was lying here? No. You were stripped to the skins when you arrived here. Besides, looks like you got enough of a journal penned on your body. What about Farrot? Do you know him? Nobody I know. But then, again, I don't know many people. Still, some Burke's got to know where to find Farrod. Uh, once we get out of here, that is. How do we get out of here? Well, all the doors are locked, so we need the key. Chances are one of the walking corpses in the room has it. Walking corpses? Yeah, the mortuary keepers use dead bodies as cheap labour. The corpses are dumb as stones, but they are harmless and won't attack you unless you attack first. Is there some other way? You don't want... I don't want to kill them just for a key. What? You think it's going to hurt their feelings? They are dead! But if you want a bright side to this, if you kill them, at least they'll have a rest before their keepers rise them up to, up to work again. Well, alright, I'll take one of them down and get the key. Well, before you do that, arm yourself first. I think there's a scalpel, scalpel, <laughs> scalpel on one of those shelves around here. No, search the shelves of the room for a weapon to attack the zombies with. When you find one, go to the inventory screen the backpack button on the lower right and arm yourself. If you wish to examine any items you find, right click on them in the inventory screen. Alright, I'll look for one. One last thing. These corpses are as slow as molasses, but getting punched by one of them is like being kissed by a battering ram. If they get start getting an edge on you, remember you can run and they can't. Use it to keep some distance if you need to recover. Note to run. Either toggle run on the options menu or hold down the shift key and left click on the area you want to run to. If you're in danger of dying, use running to keep your distance from these zombies while you recover. Alright, thanks for the advice. Yeah. Okay, so what we got? We have. These barrels contain a murky liquid. It smells like a cross between vinegar and formaldehyde. This slab is covered with dried blood and other remains. This device looks like some sort of sewing machine. Arms with hooks, tubes and metallic thread hang from it. I'm gone. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Gone. Let's do 
door is locked, you will need a key. Alright, you found the scalpel. Now go get those corpses. And don't worry, I'll stay back and provide valuable tactical advice. Maybe you could help me more. I will be helping you. Good advice is hard to come by. I meant help in attacking the corpse. Me, I'm a romantic, not a soldier. I just get in the way. When I attack this corpse, you better be right there with me. Or you'll be the next thing that I'll plunge this scalpel in. Here. Alright, I'll help you. Note, if you want Mort to help you attack, simply make sure that both of you are selected when you attack the corpse. Mort will join in the attack. I'm glad we understand each other. Time to introduce these corpses to the second death then. Though you can select the attack cursor from the quick menu, pressing the A key toggles the attack cursor without using your menu. Let's go! Okay, the door is locked, you will need a key. The inventory scheme, what have we got? We have. Okay, we are the nameless one. We are currently a fighter. We have... Bible. This is your eye. Looks like it's seen better days. Yep. Fist. Default weapon. One to three crushing. Your fist is your default attack. Though the amount of damage you can do with your fist is relatively small, you can attack quickly and the damage you do is affected by your strength. Your punches are lethal. You can kill with repeated blows. As long as you have not filled all your current your quick weapon slots, you can always select fist as your current weapon. Okay. Scalpel one to three piercing. Edge not usable by priest. This simple surgical cutting tool looks like it's seen a lot of use. To equip the scalpel, left click it to pick it up. Then drop it on the player character's portrait or in his weapon slot. Okay. Bandages heals free hit points. This is a roll of bandages, useful for staunching minor wounds. Note, note when used, bandages will heal a character for free hit points of damage. To use them, either select the use button or place them in one of your quick slots and use them on the quick action menu on the world screen. Bandages are stackable items. When you pick them up, they automatically stack on top of one another in your venture, freeing up, freeing up slots for other items. If you wish to unstack them for any reason, simply double click on them. You will then be given an option to divide the stack. Okay. And this is Mort. Mort is also a fighter with extremely high armor class, so he's. And Mort's bite. Mort's bite. One to three piercing. Proficiency. Fists. Don't ask. Mort's bite is lethal and he can masticate someone to death. As long as his quick weapon slots are not all filled, Mort can select bite as his current weapon. Mort's bite is his default attack. Although the amount of damage he can do with his bite is relatively small, it allows him to attack quickly, which can infuriate any mage who's trying to cast a spell. Okay. Shambling corpse looks like it's been dead for several years. The skin along his forehead is peeled back, revealing the chalk white skull. Someone has chiseled the number 569 into the exposed bone. Examine, look, I'm looking for a key. Do you happen to have one? Uh, Chief, they can't hear you, alright? They're dead. You're dead, and you're talking to me. Yeah, but I am special. Death couldn't kill my zest for life. These corpses here, what rolls his eyes, they probably didn't have much personality to begin with. I see. Look, Chief, watching you trying to the ch swap the chance with these corpses isn't doing much for my morale. Let's leave the corpse talk for the barmies, alright? Alright then, let's go. Okay. 
examine the corpse, see if it's carrying a key. This corpse doesn't appear to be carrying a key, and it doesn't look as if it would be able to use one if it did. Its fingers are broken as if someone smashed them with a hammer. You do happen to notice that the left shoulder is heavily bandaged. The bandages might be useful if the corpse was disposed of first. It was great talking to you. Farewell. So. Like the other corpses in this room, this one is covered in blood and completely gutted. I'm gone. Okay, let's do a quick save there. Dry blood covers this slab's surface. Done. His corp head lolls back and forth on its shoulders. Judging from the angle of his neck, it looks as like this man may have been hanged. The number 825 has been painted on the side of his head. I'm looking for a key. Do you happen to have one? Hmm. Examine the corpse, see if it has a key. See if it's carrying a key. His corpse is carrying nothing, but you happen to notice that his hands are heavily bandages. The bandages might be used with the corpse were disposed of first. Guess you don't have the key. You don't happen to know which of your other course friend might have the key out of this place. Uh, Chief, they can't hear you alright, they're dead. Yeah. Bloody cloth covers the remains of this corpse. The stench rising from the body is almost unbearable. This corpse looks like someone turned it inside out. A machine at the head of the table has peeled the skin off the forehead to give direct access to the skull. Hmm. This corpse stops and stares blankly at you as you approach. The number 482 is carved into his forehead and his lips have been stitched closed. A faint smell of formaldehyde that emanates from the body. Examine the corpse, see if it's carrying a key. This corpse looks like the one with the key. It's holding it tightly in its left hand, its thumb and forefinger locked around it in a death grip. Looks like you'll need to hack the corpse's hand off to find to free the key. I need that key, corpse. Corpse, looks like you're not long for this world. Okay, preparation room key. The head of this bronze key has been twisted around itself several times so it resembles a screw. If more is to be believed, it locks one of the doors in the preparation room. Note, when using keys in Torment, you only need to have them in your inventory to unlock the door. In some cases, the key will vanish after it is used. This is done when the key is no longer needed and frees up your inventory slots for other, more important items. Looks like someone is in the middle of dissecting this corpse. Okay. Done. Done. I'm gone. Psst, 
some advice, Chief. I'll keep it quiet from. Uh, I'd keep it quiet from here on. No need to put any more corpses in a dead book than necessary, especially their femmes. Plus, killing them might draw the caretakers here. I don't think you mentioned it before. Who are these caretakers? They call themselves the Dustmen. You can't miss them. They have an obsession with black and rigor mortis of the face. They're an adult bunch of ghoulish death worshippers. They believe everybody should die sooner, better than later. Later. I'm confused. Why do these dustmen care if I escape? Weren't you listening? I said the dust is believe everybody's got to die sooner, better than later. Do you think the corpses you've seen are happier in a dead book than out of it? The corpses I've seen here, where did they all come from? Death visits the plains every day, Chief. These shamblers are all that's left of the poor sods who sold their bodies to the caretakers after death. Before you said something about making sure I didn't kill any female corpses, why? What? Are you serious? Look, Chief, these dead chits are the last chance for a couple of hardy bashers like us. We need to be chivalrous. No hacking them up for keys, no knocking their limbs off, things like that. Last chance, what are you talking about? Chief, they're dead, we're dead. See where I'm going, eh, eh? You can't be serious. Chief, we've already got an opening line with these limping ladies. We've all died at least once. They'll, we'll have something to talk about. They'll appreciate men with our kind of death experience. Wait, didn't you just say before that I'm not dead? Well, all right, you might not be dead, but I am. And from where I'm standing, I wouldn't mind sharing a coffee in with some of these fine sinewy cadavers I see here. Mort starts clacking his teeth as if in anticipation. Of course, the caretakers would have to part with them first, and that's not likely. All right, I'll try and remember that. Look, Chief, it's obvious you're still a little bit addled after your kiss with death. So I've got two bits of advice for you. One, if you've got questions, ask me, all right? Note to speak to a party member, select the talk option from the quick menu, then left click on the party member you wish to speak to. All right, if I have any questions, I'll ask you. Second, if you're half as forgetful as you seem to be, start writing stuff down. Whenever you come across something that might be important, jot it down so you don't forget. If I had that journal I was supposed to have with me, I'd do that. Start a new one then, Chief. No loss. There's plenty of parchment and ink around here to last you. Hmm. Alright. Couldn't hurt. I'll make a new one then. Use it to keep track of your movements. If you ever start to get cloudy on the important things like who you are, or more importantly, who I am, use it to refresh your memory. Note, to access your journal, select the journal button in the lower hand corner of the world screen and select the journal button on the quick menu. Your journal will automatically be updated throughout the game. Alright, let's go. Updated my journal. So yeah, journal, 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 journal. That's you. Okay, we have quests, signed quests, find Farod. From what Mort read from the directions tattooed on my back, I need to find someone named Farod. I'm not certain where to start looking. Hopefully asking some of the locals of this strange place will allow me to track him down. Well, it's going to be a short game if it doesn't really, isn't it? Find your missing journal. From what Mort read from the, read from the tattoos direct directions tattooed on my back. I was supposed to have a journal with me when I woke up in a mortuary. I'd better find it. Hopefully I can, it can help me figure out what's going on. Okay. Beasts. PCs and NPCs. So PCs, let's see. That's us. You are nameless. You awoke on a slab in the mortuary in Sigil, covered in scars and tattoos. Your memory gone. Who has done this to you and why? You don't know yet but you're going to find out so yeah nice brutal basher there okay 
Mort. Mort is a talking skull. His sole weapon seems to be his mouth, whether by taunting or binding. He seems to be along for the ride, whether you want him around or not. You are somewhat curious as to how he is able to float around. So, and NPCs we have... Zombie female. And zombie male. Zombies are mindless corpses animated by necromancy. Unlike skeletons, zombies still have a great deal of their flesh attached to their frame, and this is both an advantage and a disadvantage. Makes them tougher and stronger than skeletons, but at the same time, rigor mortis hinders their movements, making them much slower than a normal human being. Okay. And a journal. D1. My original journal's gone missing, so I've started a new one. I woke up in a place called the Mortuary. I don't know who I am, what I'm doing, or even how I got here. The only person I encountered was a chattering skull named called Mort. While he was checking my wounds, he discovered a set of directions tattooed on my back. I know you feel like you've been drinking a few kegs of sticks, Wash, but you need to centre yourself. Among your possessions is a journal that sheds some light on the dark of the matter. Farrod can fill you in with the rest of the chant if he's not in a dead book already. Don't lose the journal or we'll be up the sticks again. Whatever you do, do not tell everyone, anyone who you are or what happens to you, or they'll put you on a quick pilgrimage to the crematorium. Do what I tell you. F read the journal, then find Farrod. Did I leave this message for myself? Looks like I need to find this Farrod and my journal. Okay. So let's talk to more. Hey, what's eating you, Chief? Can you read to me what's tattooed on my back again? Okay, so that's just going against over everything that we've read before. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba how do I use these bandages? Well, you you use them, staunch blinded and all that. Now, to use bandages on yourself, right click on them while in the inventory screen. To use on another person, place them in one of your quick item slots on the inventory screen. Select the use button on the quick menu of the world screen, then click on your target. Got it. I had some other questions for you. Hey, so what's eating you, Chief? Hmm. Nothing at the moment, Mort. Just checking to see if you were still with me. Okay. So, I am going to leave, us, leave it here. This has been Darvain doing... Let's put... Oh. Yep. Check out. I forgot to uh, check out my car saves. All these. We don't need these. As you can see. Okay. Okay. So yes, this has been Darvain doing Let's Play Planescape Torment. If you like what you see in here, be sure to like, subscribe, share and comment. Please consider sponsoring me on Patreon. And until next time, goodbye.